Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be able to talk to so many of you in so many places. My name is Brian Schmidt, and as was said, I'm the Vice Chancellor of the Australian National University now, but I'm also an astronomer up at Mount Stromlo uh, Observatory, uh, which is part of the ANU. And so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the universe, pretty much bring you from the very beginning of the universe all the way to where we think the universe uh, is going to go into the future. Uh, it's, a, it's a complicated subject, so I'm going to do my best to make sure everyone can understand a bit of it, and uh, it will be um, a little complicated in a few places, and I'll do my best to make sure that everyone uh, gets a sense of how it works. And we can, of course, ask some questions and try to sort things out, and maybe I'll learn a little bit from you. Now, I know that uh, Young Stars has been going for a long time, and I want to just give a shout out to people who've been with us from the very beginning. And so, uh, you know who you are, but let me just uh, give your names out. Uh, Amira, Annalise, Austin, Chi, Denali. I like Denali as a good name because I grew up in Alaska, and that's the name of the giant mountain in the center of Alaska where I grew up. Eric, George, Diok. Lily, Lucy, uh, Mickey, Rylan, Samuel, Thomas, Will, and Xavier. So thanks for being along for this long ride. And I hope everyone is staying safe uh, in this time where we have COVID-19 causing me to work from home. And I think many of you will be in your homes as well. It's a funny thing, this disease, but it will eventually uh, go away. Maybe not completely, but it will become much easier to live uh, and do things together again. So I'm going to fire up my screen now uh, and uh, talk for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll have a chance to go through and uh, answer some of your questions. So let's see how we do that. One second. All right. Uh, anyone want to give me the heads up that everyone can see my screen? Looks good. Thank you. All right. So the universe from beginning to end. Uh, let's start off thinking about how we measure the universe. So it turns out we use the speed of light as a way to understand how big the universe is. Light travels 300,000 kilometers in one second. So that's fast, but it's not so fast it's unimaginable. It means it can go around the Earth about seven and a half times a second. And so if we think about how far light travels, we can actually measure out the universe. So if we want, for example, to go to the moon, it's just over a second. It's a little bit further than a second uh, to the moon. If we want to go to the sun, well, the sun across is about uh, five, five light seconds or so across. We can go even further. We can go from the sun to the earth. And that's something I learned to be eight light minutes. And indeed, so it takes light eight minutes to get all the way from the sun to the earth. And that's because it's 150 million kilometers between the sun and the earth. Now that sounds like a long ways and it is a long ways. And a spaceship like um, we can build here on Earth, it would take almost a year to get to the sun at the fastest we can go right now. But if we look up in the sky in Australia or New Zealand or from the Southern Hemisphere, we can see this star circled. It's called Alpha Centauri. If you live up in the Northern Hemisphere, you will not seen this star because you can only see it from the South. That turns out to be the solar system that is closest to our own, but it's 4.3 light years in distance. It takes light 4.3 years to get to us. So if we are ever thinking about traveling to Alpha Centauri and there is a planet going around one of the stars of Alpha Centauri system called Proxima Centauri, and it looks a lot like the Earth, actually, potentially. But the conversation would take 4.3 years just for someone to hear what I said, and another 4.3 years to hear back what 
uh, their answer was. So you'd have to be very, very patient. That's the closest star in the sky. But if you look up into the sky, if you have a dark sky, you will see the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is made up of literally hundreds of billions of stars. Hundreds of billions of stars. And the Milky Way is hundred, about 100,000 light years across, made up of all of those stars. And we are orbited by a little galaxy, again, that we can see down south here in Australia, about 185,000 light years away. It is like the moon of our galaxy. We call it the Large Magellanic Cloud. And if you look in that image, you can see another little smudge, and that's called the Small Magellanic Cloud. It's a bit further away at, and about 10 times smaller than our satellite galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Now that Large Magellanic Cloud only has about 10 billion stars in it, and the Small Magellanic Cloud about a billion stars. So the Large Magellanic Cloud has more stars in it than there are people on Earth, and that is a tiny little galaxy. Let's go even further afield. Uh, let's look at the universe, but before we do that, I just want to give you a sense of what our Milky Way looks like. That picture I've just taken was taken from looking out at just the entire sky from space. But here's a nearby galaxy that we think looks a lot like the Milky Way. Uh, and you can see the Milky Way is almost like uh, an egg seen on its side, or maybe two eggs back to front, fried eggs. And if you were to look at the Milky Way from the top, we think it might look like this, or possibly like this, or something in between. So our Milky Way, as I said, has hundreds of billions of stars in it. The Hubble Space Telescope allows us to go out and take the, 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 the most sensitive and deepest pictures of the universe we have. And if we look at a place in the sky smaller than the full moon here, this is what we see. We see literally galaxies everywhere. And in this case, we're looking back 12 billion years into the past, 12 billion years. The Earth is only four and a half billion years old. And so we are looking back in time well before the Earth was formed. Now, each of those little dots on the screen there is a galaxy and a galaxy typically containing hundreds of billions of stars. But the galaxies in this image are a little different because they're really seen a long time ago, sort of baby photos. And the one thing that you need to know about galaxies is they're cannibals. And the big galaxies eat the little galaxies. So here are two galaxies where the one little galaxy, which is all puffed up and kind of blue and green and makes a circle, is being eaten by a bigger galaxy. Here's a pretty nearby galaxy that is just eaten. And this is sort of the leftover crumbs of its dinner, a galaxy that it's eaten. Some galaxies are huge. This is the biggest galaxy in the nearby universe. And we know it's eaten literally hundreds upon hundreds of galaxies to get to as big as it is. And inside it, when we take a picture with the Hubble Space Telescope, we see something funny. We see a very bright center and what we call a jet, a stream of light coming out. And it turns out that light is moving very, it's in material that's moving very fast, almost the speed of light. Last year, we were able to use a new radio telescope that could see right into the center of the bright part of that galaxy. And this is what they saw. They saw a big dark spot surrounded by light. And we think that big dark spot is a black hole. A black hole 
uh, more than a billion times bigger than our sun. But of course, it's not very, that means heavier than our sun, but not actually big. It's really quite small. And what we're seeing here is essentially its shadow. It's a remarkable thing that we can go through and look and actually see black holes, or at least their shadows now. If we look even further away than Hubble can see, and here we have to do it again in microwaves, which is a form of light that we use to, for example, cook our vegetables, we see a time where the universe is all bumpy and messy, but there are no galaxies. And we think the universe back here was hot. It's almost as hot as our sun in this image. So it's a very different time 13 and a half billion years ago that this picture shows. Before that, as I'll show you, we think we had something called the Big Bang. So how did we figure out all this stuff? Well, we had to go through and make measurements and we make measurements with telescopes. And the first person who made a measurement with a telescope uh, that, uh, of a galaxy of, that was important was a person in Arizona named Vesto Slifer. Probably not someone you've ever heard of, but he took the light of the sun and he, or of, 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 of stars, I'm sorry, he took the light of stars in a galaxy and he spread it out into the colors of the rainbow. Now, if you do that for our sun, and remember our sun is a star, you can see places of different colors of light where the sun has none of that color. And those are the little dark bands shown at the top of the screen. And everything in the universe has a little fingerprint of light uh, that's associated with it. So uh, iron, for example, has a bunch of dark spots where no light, it kind of takes away all the light. Uh, and so you can always tell if the sun, for example, has iron and how much by how many of those lines they are, there are and how, how dark they are. So when he looked at a galaxy, he saw that the lines were there the same as the sun. But there was a difference. The lines had been stretched they had been stretched from blue to red. And he realized that there was a reason light might be stretched. And that's something he saw here on Earth. And it's called the Doppler effect. So here's an Australian police car, but it's pretty much works for all police cars anywhere in the world. And if a police car has its siren on as it goes by you, the sound waves get compressed as it comes towards you. And that makes the sound higher in pitch. And as it goes by, then we see the, light, the sound waves that are stretched and they're lower in pitch. And so that's why a siren, when it goes by you, kind of goes as it goes by you. And that is the Doppler effect. And the amount of the stretching of the sound can tell you how fast the car is coming at you or going away. Galaxies are the same way. It turns out if a galaxy is going away from you, then its light is stretched and made red, exactly what Vesto Slifer saw. And he saw that almost every galaxy in the sky was moving away from us. So it seemed a funny thing to see. Why would Earth be a special place where everything was trying to leave? And we figured it out by making some more measurements. And those measurements were about measuring how far away those galaxies were. And if we want to measure how far away a galaxy is, then we simply have to look at how bright an object is because the further away it is, the fainter it appears. And so a famous astronomer who you probably have heard of, Edwin Hubble, 
because he has a telescope named after him, went through and he looked at how bright stars were in those galaxies. And what he saw was that the faster the galaxy was moving away, that is, the more its light was stretched, the fainter its stars was. So the further it was away, because it had faint, that's faint stars, the faster it was moving away from us, its light was more stretched. And because of that, he announced in 1929 that that meant the universe is expanding. Now, why would he say that? Let me do a little cartoon for you. Here's the universe, and you can see I've just expanded the universe for you. It's a, it's a, it, this is a toy uh, universe. So I've expanded the toy universe, and now I'm going to take before and after and see what I see. So if I take the before and I overlay it with the after, you can see that nearby objects have moved a little bit as I've expanded the universe and distant objects have moved a lot. So if the universe is expanding, you see what Hubble saw. The further away something is, the faster it appears to be moving away from us. And it doesn't matter where you are in the universe, everyone sees the same thing. It's just seen from their point of view. Now I want you to think, imagine the universe is expanding. That means things are getting further and further apart. Let's run the universe in reverse. What happens? In the past, things were closer and closer and closer together until everything in the universe was on top of everything else, the Big Bang. If the universe is expanding, when we put it into reverse, everyone sees the same thing. The universe gets closer and closer together and there's a time when everything in the universe is on top of everything else. Now, I wanna tell you a little bit about my story, about uh, because my story is important to understand about the future of the universe. But to understand the universe, uh, how I measured with a big team of people, you need to understand just a little bit about the life of a star like our sun. Now I've already told you our sun is about four and a half billion years old, and we think it's gonna live for at least another five and a half billion years, and maybe even seven or eight billion years. But our sun was formed in a region like this, this is a picture taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, and it's a bunch of dust and gas, and that's come down by gravity to form new stars. And these are some of the prettiest places uh, in the universe to my eye. And this is the birthplace of stars. And you can see that each one of these little bumps and tufts are a place where a bunch of stars are gonna form. And after gravity does about a hundred million years worth of work, you end up with a cluster of stars. This cluster of stars is known as the Pleiades, or also known as the Seven Sisters. Or if you're in Japan, it's known as Subaru. It has names because every place on the planet can see these same stars. And our sun was formed probably in a group of stars four and a half billion years ago. And, and the Earth was formed just after it, and the Earth is orbiting the sun, but eventually our sun is gonna puff up and unfortunately destroy the Earth. And then our uh, sun will, after it's puffed up, blow off a bunch of its hydrogen and helium, and the center of it's gonna collapse down to a little tiny star we call a white dwarf, a star not much bigger than the Earth. So that's known as a white dwarf, and that's the end. That's what our sun will eventually turn into billions of years from now. And you can see stars doing this, where they puff up and lose their outer bits and collapse to the white dwarf in the center. So that is what we call a planetary nebula, and you can see the outer bits of the star glowing like a giant neon sign. 
and the little white dwarf in the center. And these things are all over the sky. And they're also some of the prettiest things on the, in, the, in, the, in the universe, in my opinion. So uh, that white dwarf there is really important and doesn't do much except for it's quite hot when it's born at the end of the sun's life, but then it just cools forever unless our sun has a friend. Now our sun doesn't have a friend, but a lot of suns are born in what we call binary systems. That's where two stars are there. And so in those stars, you get kind of this interesting dance between the two stars. The star that's a little bigger grows and starts to puff up at the end of its life. And when it does that, it'll start moving a bunch of its material to the other star as it collapses down to this white dwarf in the center. But that other star now is kind of superheated. It's got a bunch of extra stuff on it and it's going to start to grow and uh, become brighter and brighter. And it too will start to puff up. So this new star that has a bunch or this old star that has a bunch of new stuff on it will start to puff up eventually as well. And when it does, the white dwarf still has lots of gravity. They're still very heavy. And it can start growing heavier and heavier and heavier, except if it reaches a magic number of about 1.4 times heavier than our sun. And then it explodes. It explodes as a giant thermonuclear bomb, just like a big, big version of what we can do here on Earth, but not, you know, something the size of a suitcase, but something the size of our sun. So these are useful because they're so bright, they outshine an entire galaxy of stars. And so we can see them all the way to the other side of the universe. So imagine if we are going to measure the universe. And this is probably the hardest thing in my talk, and I'll try to go slow and explain it. Imagine I can go through and see these exploding stars, and I can see them back in time. I can go through and I can see how big the universe is over time. So we know that Hubble went through and measured how far galaxies were, and how fast the universe is expanding. That's essentially, if you can measure how far away a galaxy is and how much its light has, uh, and sort of how, how much its light's been stretched, that allows you to measure how big the universe is uh, back in time. And so imagine we can look to when the universe was older or, or younger and younger, so back in time, then we're actually just going down this dotted line closer to when the galaxies were closer and closer. Now, we know the universe is full of gravity. And so if the universe has a lot of gravity in it, if it's really heavy, then it turns out that the universe slows down over time. And so if I can measure how big the universe is back in time, I can see if the universe is following the dotted line or the solid line. So if the universe is slowing down because it's very heavy and full of stuff, uh, then it follows the solid line. If the universe is light, then it follows the dotted line. Why do I care? Well, it turns out it matters for what happens in the future. Because if the universe is light, the dotted line means the universe just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time. But if the universe is heavy, then the universe slows down, stops expanding. And while all universes begin in a big bang, the heavy ones end in what I like to call the Ganab Gib, the big bang backwards. So when I moved to Australia, more than 25 years ago, my job was to look back in time and use those very bright exploding stars to do so. Here is the picture that we took, the team that worked with me back a long time ago now. 
And here is an image, uh, which unfortunately I think has, uh, this is an image of an object five billion years in the past. And we know it's there. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, animation isn't working because we took an image before and after and we could see that little star up here. So we are looking back with that image five billion years in the past or to a time before when the earth was formed. So to cut a long story short, a three year story, what answer did we see? Well, it turns out none of the above. We saw the red line. We looked in the past and we saw the universe do a funny, funny thing. We saw it slow down and then speed up. It seems to be like on a roller coaster and that roller coaster goes in and means the universe is speeding up. It's, it's, it's accelerating. That's crazy. The universe is getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster. And it turns out we think it's because gravity can work in reverse sometimes. Albert Einstein helped us understand that if the universe is full of energy, energy that's everywhere, including in my body and your body, not much of it, but it's everywhere, it makes gravity push rather than pull. And 70% of the universe, we think, is that energy that we now call dark energy. So what does this mean? Well, what's our future? <clears throat> our sun is going to puff up, but not for another 5 billion years. And it will destroy the Earth, but we don't need to worry too much about that. That is like, you know, uh, well after us. So it literally is nothing to worry about for us, but it is eventually what will happen to the earth. And the universe, well, the universe is gonna keep on speeding up and go faster and faster. <clears throat> and the universe will, at an ever increasing rate, expand. And as things get further and further away and farther and farther apart, it will fade away. But again, it's okay. This is hundreds of billions of years into the future. So that, my friends, is the universe from beginning to end.